Xavier Niels of New Jersey to be United States District Judge for the District of New Jersey. I send a cloture motion to the desk. The clerk will report the cloture motion. Cloture motion. We, the undersigned senators, in accordance with the provisions of Rule 22 of the Standing Rules of the Senate, do hereby move to bring to a close debate on the nomination of Executive Calendar Number 130, Julian Xavier Niels of New Jersey, to be United States District Judge for the District of New Jersey, signed by 17 senators as follows. I ask consent the reading of the names be waived. Without objection. I move to proceed to legislative session. Questions on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion is agreed to. I move to proceed to executive session to consider calendar 127. Questions on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion is agreed to. Clerk will report the nomination. Nomination, the Judiciary, Regina M. Rodriguez of Colorado to be United States District Judge for the District of Colorado. I send a cloture motion to the desk. Clerk will report the cloture, cloture motion. Cloture motion, we the undersigned senators in accordance with the provisions of Rule 22 of the Standing Rules of the Senate do hereby move to bring to a close debate on the nomination of Executive Calendar Number 127, Regina M. Rodriguez of, Calif of Colorado to be United States District Judge for the District of Colorado, signed by 17 senators as follows. I ask consent reading of the names be waived. Without objection. I move to proceed to legislative session. Question is on the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion is agreed to. I move to proceed to calendar 46, H.R. 7. Clerk will report. Motion to proceed to H.R. 7, an act to amend the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 to provide more effective remedies to victims of discrimination in the payment of wages on the basis of sex and for other purposes. I move to proceed to calendar 46. Oh, I send a cloture motion to the desk. Clerk will report the cloture motion. Cloture motion, we the undersigned senators in accordance with the provisions of Rule 22 of the Standing Rules of the Senate do hereby move to bring to a close debate on the nomination of, on the motion to proceed to calendar number 46, H.R. 7, an act to amend the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 to provide for effective remedies to victims of discrimination in the payment of wages on the basis of sex and for other purposes, signed by 17 senators as follows. I ask unanimous consent the reading of the names be waived. Without objection. Finally, I ask unanimous consent that the cloture motions with respect to executive calendars number 130 and 127 ripen at 5.30 p.m. on Monday, June 7th, that the cloture motion with respect to the motion to proceed to H.R. 7 ripen upon disposition of S. 1260, and that the mandatory quorum calls for the cloture motions filed today, May 28th, be waived. Is there objection? Without objection. And now, Madam President, I have a brief statement on the vote on the January 6th Commission. Uh, my colleagues, this was a case of good news and bad news about the Republican Party in the Senate. The good news, Republicans worked with Democrats on comprehensive legislation to, co to strengthen our commitment to scientific research, which will pass the Senate when Senate resumes session. The bad news, the Republican minority just mounted a partisan filibuster against an independent commission to report on January 6th. Both, both efforts should have moved forward in a solidly bipartisan way. But out of fear or fealty to Donald Trump, the Republican minority just prevented the American people from getting the full truth about January 6th. The Republican minority just prevented the Senate from even debating the bill. No opportunity for amendments, no opportunity for debate. There was an attempt by the Republican minority to shunt this vote into the dark of night. But because of today's Senate time agreement, it was done in broad daylight. The American people will see how each Republican senator voted. Now, this should have been simple. The commission was bipartisan, independent, straight down the middle. House Democrats accepted every change that House leadership requested. Speaker Pelosi and I supported and still do support the changes Senator Collins proposed, and we told that to other senators. Senate Republicans for months publicly supported the idea of a commission, but now all of a sudden the Senate minority and the Senate minority leader waged a partisan filibuster against the bill. This vote has made it official. 
Donald Trump's big lie has now fully enveloped the Republican Party. Trump's big lie is now the defining principle of what was once the party of Lincoln. House Republicans canned Congresswoman Cheney for the crime of telling the truth that Joe Biden is president. Republican state legislatures, seizing on the big lie, are conducting the greatest assault on voting rights since the beginning of Jim Crow. Republicans in both chambers are trying to rewrite history and claim that January 6th was just a peaceful protest that got a little out of hand. And now this, a partisan blockade of a simple, independent, bipartisan commission. I've heard all the excuses why Republicans are opposing this bill. It's too early. It goes on too long. It's not needed. Almost all of these excuses are meritless and were invented in the past two weeks. We all know what's going on here. Senate Republicans chose to defend the big lie because they believe anything that might upset Donald Trump could hurt them politically. We've all lived through the horrors of January 6th. I was no further than 30 feet from those white supremacist hooligans. Do my Republican colleagues remember that day? Do my Republican colleagues remember the savage mob calling for the execution of Mike Pence, the makeshift gallows outside the Capitol? Men with bulletproof vests and zip ties breaking into the Senate gallery and rifling through your desks Police officers crushed between doorways. Shame on the Republican Party for trying to sweep the horrors of that day under the rug because they're afraid of Donald Trump. Our democracy has long endured because leaders of good faith, even if they disagreed even at political cost, shared a fidelity to the truth. Not so today. I hope this is not the beginning of an effort by Senate Republicans to prevent this chamber from debating reasonable, common-sense legislation, we will soon see. After the state work period, I will bring forward legislation that would help provide equal pay for women. Will our Republican colleagues let the Senate debate the bill, or will they engage in another partisan filibuster of urgent legislation? We will soon see. Now, Madam President, got a lot of pages here. <laughs> a lot of business to conduct. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to executive session to consider the following nominations. Calendar 132 and all nominations on the Secretary's desk in the Foreign Service that the nominations be confirmed on block. The motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate that no further motions be in order to any of the nominations, that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action, and the Senate then resume legislative session. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to executive session to consider the following nomination, calendar 133, that the Senate vote on the nomination without intervening action or debate, the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order to the nomination, that any statements related to the nomination be printed in the record, that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action and the Senate then resume legislative session. Without objection, the clerk will report. Nomination, Department of Defense, Ronald S. Moultrie of Maryland to be Undersecretary for Intelligence and Security. Is there further debate? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The nomination is confirmed. I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Veterans Affairs be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 2523 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. The clerk will report. H.R. 2523, an act to amend the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 to improve the COVID-19 Veteran Rapid Retraining Assistance Program and so forth and further purposes. Without objection, the committee is discharged and the Senate will proceed. I ask unanimous consent that the bill be considered read a third time. 
Without objection. I know of no further debate on the bill. Is there further debate? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The bill is passed. I ask that the, the, I ask that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Without objection. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the EPW Committee be discharged from further consideration and the Senate now proceed to Senate Res. 13195. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 195, recognizing the 50th anniversary of the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System. Without objection, the committee is discharged and the Senate will proceed. Is there objection? No. I know of no further debate on the measure. Is there further debate? Hearing none, the question is on adoption of the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The resolution is agreed to. I ask unanimous consent that the Inhofe Amendment to the preamble be agreed to, the preamble as amended be agreed to, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of Calendar 61 S921. The clerk will report. Calendar number 61 S921, a bill to amend Title 18 United States Code to protect, further protect officers and employees of the United States and for other purposes. Without objection, the Senate will proceed. I, ask, I further ask that the committee reported substitute amendment be agreed to, the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Res 255 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 255 designating May 2021 as ALS Awareness Month. Without objection, the Senate will proceed. I know of no further debate on the measure. Is there further debate? Hearing none, the question is on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The resolution is agreed to. I ask unanimous consent that the preamble be agreed to and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the consideration of S. Res. 256 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 256 expressing the sense of the Senate regarding the need to conduct a comprehensive investigation to determine the origins of COVID-19. Without objection, the Senate will proceed. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and that motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the consideration of Senate Res 257 submitted earlier today. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 257, commending and congratulating the Marshall University Thundering Herd men's soccer team for winning the 2020 National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I Men's Soccer National Championship. Without objection, the Senate will proceed. I ask unanimous consent the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of Senate Res 258, which was submitted earlier today. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 258, expressing the sense of the Senate regarding the life and work of Senator John W. Warner. Without objection, the Senate will proceed. I further ask the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Without objection. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Agriculture, Nutrition, and Forestry be discharged from further consideration of S-409 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. The clerk will report. Senate Resolution 409 
a bill to amend the Commodity Exchange Act to modify the Commodity Futures Trading Commission Customer Protection Fund and for other purposes. Without objection, the committee is discharged and the Senate will proceed. I ask unanimous consent that the stabenow boozman amendment be considered and agreed to. The bill as amended be considered, read a third time and passed. The amendment to the title be agreed to and the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Without objection. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Veterans Affairs be discharged from further consideration of H.R. 711 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. The clerk will report. H.R. 711, an act to amend the West Los Angeles Leasing Act of 2016 and so forth and for other purposes. Without objection, the committee is discharged and the Senate will proceed. I ask unanimous consent that the Feinstein Amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to, the bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Without objection. And now, Madam President, finally, I ask unanimous consent that when the Senate adjourns today, it, is stand, it stand adjourned to then convene for pro forma sessions only, with no business being conducted on the following dates and times, and that following each pro forma session, the Senate adjourn until the next pro forma session, Tuesday, June 1st at 11.30 a.m., Thursday, June 3rd at 11 a.m. I ask further ask that when the Senate adjourns on Thursday, June 3rd, it next convene at 3 p.m. on Monday, June 7th. Further, that following the prayer and the pledge, the morning hour be deemed expired, the journal of proceedings be approved to date, the time for the two leaders be reserved for their use later in the day, and morning business be closed. Further, upon the conclusion of morning business, the Senate proceed to executive session to resume consideration of the Neal's nomination as provided under the previous order. Without objection. Is the, if there is no further business to come before the Senate, I ask that it stand adjourned under the previous provisions of Senate H.R.S. 258 as a further mark of respect to the late John Warner, former senator from Virginia, following the remarks of Senator Cantwell. Without objection. Madam President, I wanted to come to the floor and talk about one aspect of the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act that we haven't had time to 